Turns out there's a lot to uncover in this old lake house. After ripping up the subfloor, we exposed the moldy joists, which led us to the game plan. It's a whole lot of work, and we started with digging out the entire foundation. To our discovery, there was a mediocre drainage system installed. We cleaned it all up, and we are ready to tackle the exterior foundation waterproofing job for the first time. But Mother Nature has other plans. Disastrous plans. Oh no. Oh my gosh. It just couldn't even be worse after all of that work. So today... We are using hydraulic cement and we are going to repair some cracks in the foundation. This is important because obviously water can get through those cracks and into the crawl space. Whee! <laughs> We're hanging in the trenches again. Around the whole foundation, we only have two cracks and where those cracks are is where we are experiencing moisture coming in and rotting out the joists that are inside this abandoned place. We know that it, these cracks didn't happen when they put the foundation in because from what I've learned is that's more of like a spider crack. This is like a hairline crack. So today we're gonna start by opening this up to at least a quarter inch because that's what the hydraulic cement container says to do. And then we'll be able to patch her up. Safety takes no days off. Not around here. <laughs> the cement is so neat because you can actually use it even if there was water flowing through this crack in this very moment. Nice little V. Perfect. This is actually very, very fun. It's kind of satisfying. I'm creating this quarter inch like river through the hairline crack. I really enjoy projects like this because I feel like we learn so much and it's so exciting because we've never done anything like this before. Digging out the foundation, I'm starting to understand drainage and waterproof around a foundation. I have to say, I'm just pumped to be in the trench. <laughs> Jazzy? Yeah. Got you this. What? Thank you. You're welcome. I needed that so bad. I you been talking about it. Literally, I'm always like, oh, oh. How do you put it in? I don't know, I'm still learning too. There we go. This is so helpful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> helpful. <laughs> That's kind of you. You've been talking about it. I know. Thanks, Riggy. Hopefully you love it. <laughs> you showing off your crack? Showing off my crack. My Sorry. quarter inch crack. <laughs> I had to. I had to too. I was waiting. <laughs> it's <was> very funny. <laughs> We're 10 years old today. Yeah, we are 10 years old today. This board's also um pretty rotted, as you can see. This will all be coming uh, off soon. You da now look like a 10 year old Chad. Yes, I am. <laughs> but... <laughs> We are just focusing on the foundation and where the earth will go. The earth will always be below this on this side. So we're only going to be putting the membrane where the earth is going to be. And then this eventually will be taken care of because, yes, this is all rotted and needs to be replaced. Yeah. However, it's because there's never been gutters on this place. So it's basically a waterfall down. It's an actual waterfall. As well as like the land goes this way. So we just have like two waterfalls on our property. And all. water is just like getting right into this wood. And on the other yeah. side, if you can imagine this, this is still below. This is like in the crawl space right here. This behind here are the black joists, the ones that are molded, so. Flashback, boom. This side of the cabin is bad. This side of the cabin is good. This is our important board here. Yeah. We need to take this off. It's got to dry, girl. Like it has to come off and then you have to put some, like you got to do it. Until we're doing it though, do you think where it's is, Where is the tar paper? Did you just tear it off? No. So I'm telling you, it ends on the bottom of this and it, no, nothing is protecting this. What, protecting? Nothing There's is nothing, protecting this? Nothing protecting this. That's bad. That's what I've been saying. All right, well, time to take off the siding, eh, girls? After we finish the foundation, we'll get right to it. <laughs> yeah, I've always wanted a Tyvex house for a full winter, you know? You know, you know this? <laughs> if you know, you know. If you get it, you get it. <laughs> My brain is freaking out. I need to know what's under here. Yeah, look, Screw babe, the foundation. You can see it. We're going to come back to this. We're not there. But is it there. like that all the way around? Let's stick to the task at hand. Chisel your crack, and then we can get to the waterproofing. Between this crack, the lack of waterproofing, and all of this, everything suddenly making 100% sense. We're just keep it on. Oh. Well, they decided to bring the tar paper down on this side. That's good. 
Good job, people! Yeah, look, this side's good. And that just goes to show you that there is one, no tar paper, but two, water doesn't fall down a roof this way. Only falls off that way. Right. Right? I kind of feel like Nancy Drew. We're just like uncovering problem after problem, you know? <laughs> and solving the mystery. I'm gonna put the water in, I'm gonna stir this up, and then as soon as I stir it up, I have three to five minutes to apply it on the wall because it sets that quickly. And I'm gonna push it in with my gloves and then smooth it out with my trowel, and then we should be good to go. So fast, yeah, you can feel it. Okay, I gotta be honest with all of you. We just spent hours repairing the cracks with the hydraulic cement that we bought. It's a good thing I got a massive pail of it because we used all of it. We actually found more cracks when we got closer to the foundation and inspected it with a closer eye. So we ended up doing three large cracks and three small cracks. And all of them are really not that large actually. And the foundation is in very good condition. It took way longer than I expected. We even did some of the base of the foundation where it meets the footer as there was a significant crack here. Um, but yeah, check it out. There's one of them drying. That was the first one. I'd say after the first one, it did get a lot smoother. This one was done really well. Pretty proud of it. It looks bigger than it is. It's only a quarter inch wide. I obviously applied more and like kind of like smoothed it out as you would with drywall. Not sure if that's the way to do it, but I did it. This one's nice and hard, drying well. Anyway, definitely wasn't planning on spending the entire morning into the afternoon doing that. Bah! Bombas! Bombas! A quick moment for the work socks. They're more than work socks. They're every kind of sock. They're the best socks. Best socks, hands down. They're not only socks, they also give back. The founders discovered that the number one most requested item in homeless shelters was socks. And so since then, they've donated over a hundred million pairs because every pair that you buy donates one pair to someone in need. That's incredible. It is incredible. So many of you said that you've had Bombas for quite a few years now and they're still in great shape. I don't think we knew what our feet were missing. My feet can never go back. They are the best socks. They have built-in arch support. There's no annoying toe seams and they are made for comfort. And so many different fits. You can have work socks, hiking socks, casual socks, or you can be like the cool kids and have like the quarter socks, white, you know, everyone's wearing white socks nowadays. If you don't know, now you know. Jasmine has compression socks on. It's really good for if you're on your feet or you're doing tons of activity, compression socks really help with circulation. Do everyone you know's feet a favor and tell them about Bombas. They make a great gift. Do good and feel good with Bombas. You can get 20% off at checkout if you use code VANWIVES20 and click the link in the description or go to bombas.com forward slash VANWIVES. I'm so happy to be moving on to the next step. Hi Belle, are you keeping an eye on us? <laughs> Welcome to the back of the house. We have another quick job. We have to apply this adhesive and then we have 30 minutes, right? 30 minutes and then it's like sticky as ever. It actually says aggressive on there, like aggressively sticky or something. Yeah, I just had to touch it. So it's like a glue. We've used this product before, but not on a foundation. Which I think is easier. And not on cement, which I do believe will be easier. The entire backside is primed and ready for the membrane to go on top. We made sure that we painted around each corner as the blue skin does need to overlap on the corners to make sure no water gets in any seams. This time I made sure to take our brushes off our rollers because last time they got stuck on the roller and we had to throw it in the garbage, which is super sad because it, it is extreme sticky. So there's another helpful hint if anyone uses this stuff. And as we wait for that 30 minutes to be up, 
we read the instructions. A lot of you each and every week always ask, how do you know how to do all this stuff? And to be honest, we don't, we learn. We first do our research online, but then where you get almost all of the best advice is from the product itself. They tell you how thick the bead of your caulking has to be, how to apply it, what to do in the corners, everything you need to know. going so well. Having used this on our entire cabin and used these types of waterproof self-adhesive backing membranes. What about the roof? That's what I was gonna say. Like yeah. on the roof, on our cabin, like most similar. this is, I'm having fun. I think it's like, I did this in like one minute. I, I think this is better than having to put that mucky paint all over. Whoa! Oh. Guess how long it took me to do the entire wall in blue skin? A half an hour. 30. Woo! I think we can get all four sides done before the sun goes down. Dead or underlayment? Someone told me your supervisors are hungry. Is it true? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Are we ever excited? Are you hungry, hungry? Oh my goodness. Oh, already doing circles. Sit. Go, girl. Turn. Leave it. Yes. Go, girl. Go ahead. These girls eat like queens. And I have a pipe and hot soda water. It's been here for three days. That's what you call construction dogs. How's it going, little construction worker? Almost done this wall. Almost 8 p.m. We can finish. <laughs> so optimistic. Huh? So optimistic. I have stamina to do it. Mmm. The blue skin is finally on, the entire foundation. The funny thing is, is as fast as it was putting on these big sheets, every other little detail ended up taking way longer than expected. All of the caulking, the corners, the patches, etc., etc. But, success. It also rained on us, which meant that we had to dry and clean the blue skin before we finished the job because there is another protective layer coming up next. Yay! Okay. We made it to the end. I'm scoring the corners because the dimple board needs to go really nice and tight all along the foundation. You'll see soon. We'll explain this product very soon as well. Now that we know our dimple board fits, hey, <laughs> she has something in there, and we've got familiar with the product. Oh, Crystal is. Uh... We have some new tools. A tutu, G U N. <laughs> this is the ram set. It is going to help us secure the dimple board to the concrete foundation. It is extremely powerful. And so we have done all of our research and we are feeling pretty confident in how to use this, but we are going to practice for the first time on a piece of wood and wood? see how it goes. Yeah. No, we have to practice on our concrete because if you don't know how old it is, it could be really hard to get through or it could be really easy to get through and you don't want to damage your concrete. So these boxes come in different colors, color being color coded with how strong they are. That's crazy. Okay, it works. <laughs> oh, I used the yellow. I'm gonna try once more with the green one, which is less powerful than the yellow. And I'm gonna work on my posture. I'd use that. That one? Yeah. Nice. 
Nice. I got these fasteners, which are basically nails with a giant washer attached, just in case we couldn't use these plastic washers I got, which actually aren't working at all for us. Oh, that one popped out. I don't think we can use these washers. There's a few things that are important to mention. There's so many different types of dimple board and ours requires the dimples facing out. Okay, we figured this out and it is so sick. I'm so happy to be the new owner of a Ram set. It is mighty, mighty, mighty powerful. I was super worried about how we were gonna get anything attached to this concrete wall. And when I even think about, oh, Bumblebee. When I think about Baja, I'm always wondering how we're gonna do anything within the concrete, going through concrete. It just seems so daunting because we work with wood so often. But here we are, we're doing it. You think we can bring that across the border? be in the club we could dance it up in the hotel lobby we don't need a lot of fancy stuff just pull me some of that feel good coffee don't need a hold down to throw down show me some moves now you good now sunshine look at you okay welcome back to the trenches it's fun down here we are using this dimple board product. It's hard to kind of see because there's a fabric on here, but it is a plastic. And there are dimples, like not that kind, but humps on this plastic barrier that is going against the wall. What's really neat about this product is it relieves pressure from hydrostatic buildup against surfaces that are underneath the earth. So this is gonna relieve the building when there is lots of water in the area and it's gonna allow it to flow in between the building and the, this black barrier because there is actually, it leaves a gap in between this and the membrane. So when it's actually put on properly and it's really quite snug on the wall, it has a really high flow capacity, three times better than just having sand or aggregate in here. Don't worry, we read the manufacturer's information and the dimples actually go to the outside. The back is completely flat and it has this fabric on the outside here that touches the soil so that no build up or clogging happens, which is genius. Most importantly, when the water actually gets down through here, it is going to flow into our future French drains that will run all the way along the base of the house. And that will be backfilled with lots of beautiful stone and landscaping fabric. So this will help that water get down there quick and efficiently. Also, when we backfill, this will also protect our waterproof membrane from rips or damages. I also have to say I'm having so much fun working with new products. Although we used blue skin before, we would never done the foundation. I'm so proud of how it's turning out. The dimple board is going on so quickly once again. Super easy to use, especially with the RAM set. I love my new tool. We both have been using it and it's just so sick. It's so powerful, so consistent, and it's working so well. <laughs> You're just like me, try and do it without a double chin. I can't hear you. Try and do it without a double chin. I I caught myself like the whole time just like <laughs> We have to have a moment for the sky. It is so pretty. It looks like a painting. Another night in the dark. Every morning starts in the garden. You can't even see it, but there is like, I filled my whole shirt up. This whole basket <laughs> is full of beans. Really? Yeah, and there's like six lemon cucumbers and basil. Oh, 
That's going to be some nice lunch. Yeah. Picked it for the neighbors. Oh, it's not for us. Not for us. Well, that's kind. Mm -hmm. We got lots anyways. Are you letting them know where to find it? <laughs> oh yeah, I should tell them. Right here. All of this is the materials we need for today. As you can see, we've already got to work today. <laughs> oh my gosh. Have you seen your face? I just got a reflection of it in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> we are about to do the top trim that goes above the dimple board where you add caulking and then you add this metal trim just so it stays flush against the wall and nothing can get in. However, our nail gun is a little bit too strong. As you can see, um, well, we broke the metal. So we are going, since it's at the top, we don't need to install it right now. We're just gonna wait to do this. And we're gonna start with our French drain today, which means excavating rocks and all that fun stuff. Type. So we were figuring out what way we want to have our drain. We all we all know we have the box around our cabin now, but we also need to now get the water out. So we need a drain going where the land goes naturally. And we found their drain, and of course they didn't wrap it with any sort of fabric, which is why the drain is completely clogged. That was just no good. Now that we pulled up the pipe and we took a look at it, the pipe that they did have running away from the house, which was French drain, didn't have the fabric, which immediately will be clogged or filled with sediment. So. That's why we got the high quality geotextile. First layer, gravel. Second layer, geotextile. Then the pipe, then more gravel. Then we burrito it. I don't know if this is smart either. Can I just wait for the excavator and stop being so impatient? <laughs> I'll play Rocky. But look, but look, what? Wow, it looks so fun. So fun. Rocks, rocks, rocks. rocks. Get her in. French drain around the foundation. So we're gonna put it all in without the glue, get the setup, make sure it's on the right slope, and then we'll be able to do it for real. Our pipe is laid and leveled, and we're gonna show you what we've done. We come right here. Inside drain connects to outside drain. Very good. T, so that way it can go out that way. Bye bye. Yes, we had to close up that trench because we couldn't fill in gravel. Rookie mistake, come this way. We have another T at the very back because this is going to have a non-perforated pipe come up vertically vertically and if it ever gets clogged again we can snake it however you'll notice there's some numbers on it one two three four and that's because we have really bad news <clears throat> i don't know if you can tell by the smell of the earth right now the sky the wind you know um weather just changed we're getting three days of a huge storm. And we have an open trench. It's a rainstorm. <laughs> Not good for the trench. So everyone just like cross your fingers and your toes if you're into that. I don't know what's gonna happen. 
So we're gonna take the pipe out of the trench and keep it numbered and ordered just yeah. in case it does fill because it is supposed to be extreme rainfall. We wouldn't want sediment getting into our pipe. It'll just make it that much harder to clean. So we're gonna take it out of the trench. Good and thing we didn't glue it today and didn't get yeah. too far ahead of ourselves because that would have sucked. <laughs> Well, we'll see you soon after the storm on another day, another sunny day, or maybe next Sunday, depending on how this week goes. <laughs> I can't look, that's can't so look. bad. Oh my God. Oh no. Oh my gosh. No. What do we do? It's almost like we need to get the excavator without getting stuck, dig here. That way all the water can flow. Cause right now that is seriously bad. That's like the worst thing that could happen right now. Hi, I seen you got a moat around your cabin. You'd have to dig it on the lowest side, dig a drain around it. Or dig like a trench to let it drain. Okay. What happens if like we don't do that? It'll just keep filling up and filling up. We've ran home to get the excavator. We're now driving back down to hopefully fix the problem. I think we were so focused yesterday on just, I don't even know what we were focused on. Clearly the wrong things, mistakes happen, but um, forgot to dig the drain out. We're so focused on just the gravel and getting it all prepared that we forgot, which sounds really silly now that I'm saying it loud and it's kind of embarrassing to even admit this because um, uh, you need to divert the water away. Anyways, we'll get it all sorted. Porter doesn't, Porter and Larry don't think anything bad would happen to the blue skin and all the dimple board and everything, but it's just about keeping it as dry as you possibly can. And just by having a runoff will improve so, so much more. This is an absolute, absolute disaster. I've never seen anything so bad in my entire life. I am so, oh my gosh, this just couldn't even be worse after all of that work. and grading and material and everything. This is just an incredible amount of rainfall and it is so bad. It's so, so bad. It's all gonna be fine, but like, thank gosh we're digging out these two trenches because the water is literally going, it's backflowing currently into the interior drainage. We are definitely in a muddy mess. We are inches away from the water being over the footer, which then means it's gonna be going in that crawl space. We got here in the nick of time. I don't know if this looks like a lot of rain, but it is a lot of rain. It is not going to stop raining for three days. So just to ensure that we're a little bit safe, we are going to dig a second trench over on the edge. The land is like this. So if we do the two ends right here, I think we'll be very, very good but you never know. Tangerine Kubota is saving the day. On the plus side, we know we graded the land around our foundation properly because the uh, left half of the cabin doesn't have as much water as this one. And is the water ever flowing now with this second trench crystals digging? It's like we have a lazy river around our cabin. In a complete panic, I had to get out of this little area because it's just, now that I got that river flowing, it is flowing so fast at me that the machine could just get stuck in the mud. Look at it, this is so crazy. The footer, the footer is back! Chris, you can see the footer! I'm trying to communicate an X-ray. We can finally see the interior drain. That's good news. Look at that. All the way out there. Thank goodness. Crystal and Tangie did a grand old job. Now I have to go back without sinking in the mud. I need to go see inside of here. I don't know how deep this is. I've already got, oh brother. used to get wet in here as you can see the joists and if I come or does it no it's a shadow 
Oh no. That's wet. All this gravel is wet and that makes sense. But maybe it's just groundwater that seeped. Yeah, look. Back here is all dry. All right here. Seeped in. If anyone has any knowledge, please share it in the comments right now. That corner though. Everything else is dry. This is why you have gutters. I'm standing under a waterfall. Put gutters on your house, everyone. It's just muck. Excavating in rain, muck. Now all we have is muck. Muck. What do you want to do for the next three days? Keep an eye on my trenches, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to come back here a lot, eh? Well, if it rains really bad, they might cave in, right? And then, what a disaster. Okay, so we just hope they don't cave in. Yep. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey!